when you are black, it's about having some style. And of course, uh, this summer when I was in New York, I had a chance to sit down with my girl Constance White. She's the former editor uh, of Essence Magazine, and she has her book out. It is called How to Slay, Inspiration from the Queens and Kings of Black Style. And yeah, Kenny, don't be a hater. You know when it comes to the ascot, I'm one of the kings of style. And so, folks, uh, here's our conversation uh, with Constance White. All right, folks, back to our unfiltered video in just one moment. With the holidays just around the corner, now is the time to order holiday cards for family and friends. Now, you you know doggone well. You mail out holiday cards. They come in the mail, and you want to really uh, uh, impress your friends and family or your business folks with that. So this year, you can create custom holiday photo cards quickly, easily, and affordably at simplytoimpress.com. Now, simplytoimpress.com is your holiday photo card headquarters with thousands of unique Christmas cards and other designs to choose from. Now look, this is very simple. All you do is upload your family photos. Or you can get them from Facebook or Instagram, personalize the text, and then you're done. It's that simple. Simplytoimpress.com. Print your cards professionally on your choice of premium card stock in just a few days and rushes them straight to your door. The New York Times uh, wire cutter and named Simply to Impress their favorite custom photo card service. Simply to Impress even offers foil cards and hundreds of great holiday card designs for your business as well. Now look, if you place your order today, you'll save 30% and get free shipping. 30% savings and free shipping. All you got to do is enter the promo code DEAL, D-E-A-L, at checkout. Now save big on holiday photo cards today by using the promo code DEAL at Simply to Impress. Dot com that's simply to impress dot com and remember when you support them you also are supporting Roland Martin Unfiltered because they are now back to your Roland Martin Unfiltered. All right, Conscious, how you doing? I'm doing so well. I'm ready to slay. <laughs> <laughs> what is black style? Black style is a feeling. It's also something concrete. How we put ourselves together. It's how the black community has really shaped how they want to present themselves and then influence practically the world. See, the reason I asked that, when I was a um, news editor of Savoy Magazine, uh, we, uh, we did, um, we did, um, they wanted to do a photo shoot. And so mm -hmm. I, I mentioned okay. pastors. Okay. And I remember uh, I was That's going back was. and forth with the folks there because the pastor people, they were like, well, you know, the way these preachers dress, that's not fashion. I said, okay. I said, let me help you out. I said, mm -hmm. I hope black people are not sitting here focused on what somebody's wearing on the runway. Right. I said, but when you have, because I think in that particular issue we did, um, I know Bishop Jakes mm -hmm. was in, I know Eddie, Bishop Eddie right. Long was in it, uh, and there were a couple others. And I said, trust me, when you have five, six, six, ten thousand 10,000 people watching somebody every Sunday, they are paying attention to what that pastor Absolutely. is wearing. Yeah. I said, so y'all can call it what you want to. Right. They say, we're not going to call it fashion, we'll call it style. I said, I don't care what you Same call thing. it. It, it matter matters to black people. It. it does. And I will say, black people are looking at the runway, but they are also looking at that pastor. And not only is it 600 to 6,000, 10,000 people, and it's going to have an impact, but also it's aspirational. When you see your pastor in church, you're looking at, okay, so this is what you know, success looks like, this is what a leader looks like, this is what a good man looks like. So that has great impact, and it is style, and there is a style to both men and women and our Sunday best, how we put ourselves together. And, 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 and the reason I, reason it was we were going back and forth on it, because I was trying to get them to understand that uh, black folks, we, we don't conform to someone else's standard of what they consider right. to be stylish or considered Absolutely. to be fashionable. No, yeah. we've always did our own thing. Then everybody else yeah. said, oh, we like that. We like that and we're going to adapt it and we can repackage it and sell it and all of that too. And that's one of the things that I hope that How to Slay shows is it shows how we're so creative. The, the impact and the fertility in our communities around style. And I think a big part of it is because of what you said, because we don't need to conform to what's outside. And sometimes you're making something from nothing, which is always a place to come from to be extremely creative. And another time it's about, you know what, I, this is who I am. I think a lot of it has to do the reason that the black community is such an incredible fountain of, of inspiration and style for the rest of the world is because a lot of the time we're saying, well, you know what, this is how I want to put myself out there. 
and it's very individual, it's very original. Also, I think it's a matter of also when you begin to, you, when you're gonna put stuff together. Uh, when, when, if you don't have much, your whole yeah. deal is like, okay, that's what I got, so let's see what I can put together uh -huh. and, and make this thing work. And so all of a sudden, when it comes together, folks are like, oh, how did you do all of that? Oh, wow, I just sort that's of, right. I just I sort like of just, you, yeah, just sort I like of just, just threw, some, I just threw something together. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, but 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 the, but the creativity comes out in in that whole process. Absolutely. And the other thing is, um, Black Star, we care about how we look. We care about how we put ourselves together, and whether it's something very casual, hence falling off the butt, or it's something very formal, like the pastor, your Sunday church. We care about how we look, you know, for better or worse. Now, in this book. You didn't focus just on celebrities. No. Uh, it was a mix, and, and also it's not all contemporary. You wanted to be able to sort of give this wide range of black folks. Yes. So there are the celebrities, but it definitely, in my process, definitely did not start, or end for that matter, with celebrities. I was really looking at where are the places that black people have made an impact, and how can I show that in, in a visual way? And what, what I would often come upon are some photographs of a celebrity. But more often than not, even as we know, the celebrity is looking at the everyday person who he or she grew up with, or you know, they're looking at their sister, or they're looking at the person who they thought was really stylish um, next door. So there are a lot of people who are not necessarily famous in any way at all, but are just epitomes of great style. Uh, and also, you uh, look at these photos, uh, folks from the motherland, in terms of these vivid, rich yes. colors in, in, in these different outfits, uh, also, I think, was, exactly. was also interesting. Yes, thank you. The, there's a historic perspective, and then there's taking it back to Mother Africa historically, as well as contemporary outfits. And right now, the impact of things like holland cloth and turbans, is huge around the world and you know here in america we see you know you go to brooklyn and you probably look at some outfits and you wonder like well, okay is that person from brooklyn or are they from ghana or liberia or where it's such it's such an intermingling and such an influence was it so when when black panther when they had the screening yes. uh, and they asked folks to wear uh, uh, african royal attire Mm -hmm. um, I, I, what, what I thought would be interesting is when I saw all these different outfits, right. I just started laughing because uh, I made my first visit to uh, Africa when I went to Accra, Ghana in 2008. Okay. And even before that, there were a number of different African outfits I had. And I've gone to places and then black folks are going, man, what do you have on? And I go, well, this is African roll attire. I'll wear that with a CBC dinner or whatever because Sometimes I, I got five tuxedos, but I don't, don't want to wear them. Right. And, and the thing that I would tell people is I can wear this anywhere. So I found it interesting when they did that. Folks were like, oh, my God, this is amazing. All of these colors. And I'm sitting there going, you know, you know we've been doing that kind of right. like a while. <laughs> and, 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 and what I also tell I'm, I'm hopeful that African-Americans will then whether it's the Golden Globes or the Oscars or others, will say, wait a minute, we don't Let only have wear, to wear right, this to the Black Panther premiere. Right. Let's wear this. Let's rock this. Let's wear this. And there are two important points that you made. One, which I believe are illustrated in the book. Number one is we've been doing this. Like, this is part of the Black history and culture. And at any point, you can make it modern and contemporary, or at any point, you can wear it as something, a historic reference. And it's there. It's there for the taking. It's very powerful. Number two, would someone think about, oh, I can you know, wear this to the Oscars and wear it on the red carpet? This is one of the reasons that Lupita Ngoyo is so popular and has really touched and, and been felt by a lot of women around the world, across the board, but especially black women, because she does bring it. She's like reaching back to her culture, her, the, her African culture. Mm -hmm and bringing the hairstyles and the looks. And that's also a way that she's made herself very original, right? And you, you take notice of her. But you also encourage folks uh, to not give a damn what other people think. Because what happens is a lot of times folks will, will I remember Mark Lamont Hill and I, we were messing around and we were um, at NABJ, this was 2013. Right. And I got in Journalist of the Year. Uh, and well, thank you very much. And I, and I had 
this red, black, and white feather pocket square. Yeah. And he said, oh, man, I, 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 I couldn't wear that. Uh, and I said, because. I said, well, first, I don't dress for any dudes, mm -hmm. so I'm fine. <laughs> I'm like, and so, so he, we, 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 Do you see where I say something like that in the huh? book, too? Do you see where I talk a little bit about that, too? Like dressing, you know, women, historically right. dressing for men and then men dressing for women. And I'm, I'm just like, but, but, but I was trying to get him to understand is, I don't care what somebody else's thing. When I put it on, right. I like it, I feel good. I'm not, I'm not trying to impress you. And I think, I think, I think also when you talk about the, this individ, in, 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 individuality, it's about what makes you feel good. If you walk out that door and you mm -hmm. feel good, I don't care yeah. if you don't like the feather pocket square. Somebody right. will. <laughs> Somebody will like it, beginning with you. Right. And I think that's important. It's important, it's important to mental health, and it's important to how we present ourselves in style, because if you're feeling uncomfortable about something, if you are looking at looking for approval from someone, that is a really difficult and hard place to be in. Well, see, that's, that's why for me, when so so if we're going out, uh, like you know, they always say tell a guy, you know, well, you know, don't be honest if 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 your wife or your or, or your woman asks you how does it look. I said, no, I'm real honest. I don't like it. <laughs> or pull it on work. But then does she change because you don't like no, it? No, my whole thing, I, I look, you wearing it. But you my deal is, don't, don't ask me for my opinion. <laughs> but I will say this here, <laughs> I will say this here, I think one of my, one of my nieces did this. We were going somewhere and she was, she was uh, constantly pulling. I said, you got to take it off. Yeah. I said, because the rest of the night, you're gonna that's what pulled. you're going to be doing. Right. Because you're so self-conscious about it. About it. If you're exactly. self-conscious about something, my deal is take it off, put on something that right. makes you comfortable, and go. And because yeah. because the rest of the night you're jacked up because you're self-conscious <laughs> the whole not, night. Yes. That, can't have fun. That can't work. <laughs> you, you've got to be comfortable in your clothes. Just like you're comfortable in your own skin. And and looking for approval is not the same thing as dressing appropriately, right? So you may say, okay, I'm going to the office, right? Or I'm going for an interview or I have an important meeting right. today. And I think it's quite acceptable and is wise to think about what's appropriate to right. what you're trying to do, right? How are, how are you um, trying to make an impact? What would you say to a young man or a young woman and they're trying to find their way mm -hmm. and they're so caught up in this idea of what their peers are saying about what they're wearing. Because, because that could stunt somebody's creativity right there. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. I don't want to take any mm -hmm. chances. I'm just going to just fall in line with everybody else. What would you tell them? I would tell them, first of all, think about yourself. You know, think about what appeals to you. Think about what you feel comfortable in and start there. Now, it's also not helpful to deny the fact that, because you did say young, right? So you can't really deny the fact of biologically what happens when we become teenagers and peer pressure starts to set in. So no one wants to have their peers laugh at them. But you know what? Sometimes that's okay. And I think that's something to communicate that sometimes someone's laughing at you because they're insecure because of the problems they're having internally or when they go home. And you can't buy into that. You have to. I tell them to go to hell. Since, what? I tell them to go to hell. You tell them that that's what they should tell the person. No, that's what that's hell. what I did. Yeah. I, I didn't when know, you were there, right, you tell them to go I, to hell. I didn't give a damn what they that's thought. Because I, I wore like I rarely wore jeans, and to mm -hmm. this day, if you ever see me in jeans, if you ever see me in jeans, yeah. I guarantee you, I will have cowboy boots on. Okay. That's the. But if that's but if, but I will never. You will never see me in right. jeans without cowboy boots. Yeah. I just don't. I don't yeah, wear jeans. Like, I just okay, don't like it. Okay. And so I would, oftentimes I wore slacks. I would, might wear ties, right. whatever, to school. Right. And folks were like, oh my God, you're laughing at me. I'm like, okay, you, you know, I don't care what y'all think. Right. I mean, literally, I was in the junior right. high school. I think you have I didn't to care. give kids, you have to arm kids. You said kids. We as adults, we want to help them, of course. And you want to arm them with language, with weaponry. Because if you just say, oh, don't pay attention to, you know, what Jane is saying or what Laquan is saying or, kind of leaves them in a place like, okay, don't pay attention, but then you're in the heat of the moment and what should I do? I think you have to arm them, like you're saying, with what do I say? What's the language? What do I look? Yes, think about, or how do I look? Like, yes, think about what your body language is and so right. on too, but you want to give them some language, a script. A script, because a lot of times, right. you know, and psychologists have borne that, this out, that a lot of times you want to know what exactly to say. So, yeah, that's fair and helpful if you say go to hell or you say, you know, I don't care what you think. <laughs> Even if they're not feeling it, right. you know, at least they have something to say. So how about this here? So 
when it comes to style, when it comes to, as you say, how to slay, what do you say to folks to not get caught up in rampant commercialism? Understanding, I mean, you know, when First Lady Michelle Obama, she would, there was some outfits she wore, right. and they would, they would say, that's a $40 outfit? Oh my God, like, what is she but doing? like a million bucks. Right, and, and because I think what happens is, mm -hmm. we also have been raised or sort of bred to think that, oh no, the most expensive, that's what you go for. And you have these people who are killing themselves when mm -hmm. you can put together the unbelievable outfit, it's not costing you an arm and leg. Right, right. You know, I think there are a couple of things. When you think about, it goes back to what we were talking about with regard to what do you, what do you tell young people? It's the same thing with adults. Like, where are you getting your sense of self from? Is it coming from internal strength? which you are born with, we're all born okay, right? And we're all, you know, children of the most high and we're okay. Or are you coming from a place of, I get my strength from outside, what people say I am, you know, how people view me, what people think of me. And so it begins there, you know, and, and that's deep, but it's not all that hard if you focus on it. But if you just go around sort of unwoke and you don't see all the things that are impacting you, yes, that's going to be a tough road to hope. So it begins there. The second part of it is practically saying, listen, hey, you can have style. Money doesn't equate with style. There are people in this world who have tons right. of money, right, and no style. I was, in, when I was in Chicago. That was this guy we were. We I won't tell you any names. You're not no, no, no. Real. First of all, I completely okay, forgot his name. Yeah. And we were talking, and so he had asked me where I get my suits from, and I said, I buy it from here. And he, oh, you, know, you don't get your tailor? I said, no. And so he says, oh, well, my, you know, my suits are 2000 and my shirts are, yeah. uh, my shirts are 200 and my shoes are uh, 500 He's going on and on and on. And I'm looking at him, and I'm going, Damn, you wasted a lot of money. That's what, I mean, that's what I'm <laughs> no, thinking. It, yeah. Because it was, I mean, and, and literally, and that was that was his thing. And mm -hmm. I'm just sort of looking at it, and I'm going, you know, I don't yeah. really care. And he was, and it was as if how much it cost was driving it, right. as opposed to, but the but the reality is, he was complimenting me on how my stuff was put together, and literally my whole outfit right. from head to toe collectively wasn't $500. Which is great, and we want to share that information. I think that was the power of what you did in that moment, and that's the power of Michelle Obama, where she'll share that information when she was on that worldwide platform and say, you know, this is a Naeem Khan dress or a Jason Wu dress, and it costs $4,000, or we'd find that out, right? Mm -hmm. But at the same time, she was afraid to say, this is a $50 dress. Right? And this is a little brooch I put on it. And I think that was really empowering for all of us, mm -hmm. for across the board, black and white, but particularly for black women to say that. Because, yes, in our community, we don't want to get caught up in the brand names yep. and saying, and also, here's a really, really important point. We don't want in the digital age, in the age of the Internet, where people can create these fake lives and fake personas. Oh my God where, okay, I just went and got this pair of shoes or, and I'm telling you that it's Gucci, but it's not really Gucci. Or, you know, I went and bought, I just got this Dior and I bought it, but I'm taking it back tomorrow. And then we start to think, oh, that's the way to be successful. That's the way to get likes. That's the way to, and that's real. That is happening oh, yeah. for real. Oh, the, 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 folks, the folks who rent a plane for three hours and, and pose in it to, and take a pose picture. In, I'm like, really? Yeah. I, and the New York Times did a fantastic expose the other day, which some of us within the internet business knew already that, yes, there are a lot, and I mean a lot of fake followers online yeah. with our celebrities, people we, we admire, and there's a lot of hokey pokey going on. But they did a real expose that really broke it down, yep. the extent yep. to which... I mean, and it's totally, it's not illegal, except in some cases they're capturing people's people's um, identities. Right, right. And that is illegal. But there are a lot of people, you can go hire one to, to really jack up the number of followers and likes and so on you have. So it's all part of um, being woke and understanding what is pressing on you and the impact and that there is an alternative of reality. Of the reality is a tiny slice of people can't afford to dress 
in designer clothes, especially head to toe. But what I love about what's happening now is you can now, in the borrow and share and rent economy, right. you can rent all this stuff. <laughs> You know, so why not? So you don't have to spend a lot of money if what you want is sometimes to be in designer clothes, if you value that. So give me an example of you in a store and, and you saw something and then you went, nah, but then you circle back and then you begin to sort of put something together. You have one of those stories Ooh. where you would just, you looked at something and you went, hmm. I could start with this. I could start with and this. And I can build on this. Because, I mean, people right. ask me sometimes, they say, yeah. well, man, uh, like I'll get, like, who's your stylist? I'm going, me. Like, I'm not, uh -huh. I, don't, I'm not <laughs> I don't need somebody to dress me. I mean, my daddy right. taught me how to dress. But they, they would ask me, well, what do you start with? And sometimes I might start with the tie and then build everything from there. Right. Or I might start with the shirt yeah. and build everything from there. Sure. So, so, so there was this time when you were, you were just in a shopping, whatever, and you saw something, <laughs> and then you went, hmm, I can do this, and <laughs> I can put it with that, then put it with that, and all of a sudden, all of a sudden something, something, something just happens. Something's popping, something's happening. Well, I, I tend to, if I do that, when I, and I have done it on a few occasions, I tend to do that with shoes, but my most, you know, ooh, that shoe, and then. But my most recent experience of doing that was with a baseball jacket. And I was in the store, and I was thinking, and I saw this baseball jacket, and I thought, oh, that's really cute. And then I started thinking, hmm, I could put that with that, and if I paired it with this. And then I also started thinking about where would I wear it, and mm -hmm. could I wear it you know, across um, from winter, and then across to spring, and, because I like my clothes to work for me. Right. I don't like it because I have enough clothes that just sit there for years. Your, your deal is not that now seasonal like, stuff? I do like the se the trans seasonal right now. Right, seasonal, right. Yes, yeah. I'm not like a particular seasonal shopper. <laughs> well, is it because the reason I asked that, I, I, we, uh, I think it was Father's Day, my dad's uh -huh. birthday or whatever. And so we went to this men's store. And uh, I don't particularly like people helping me when I shop. Okay. My philosophy is if I call you, yeah, I need your help. Otherwise, right. stand back. I don't really need you advi. I don't really need okay. you advising. I don't need you. I'm good. Yeah. Just stay away. Okay. So we're so we're sitting there. And we're, we got. So I got a suit, and, mm -hmm. and so I'm sitting there, and I'm kind of like, okay, I want that shirt, and then I go and I'm looking. So I tell the sales guy, I say, hey, I need you to go get that tie off that mannequin two rows over, and he goes, oh, that's not gonna go together. I said, I did not yeah, ask man. your opinion. I said, one, it is going to go together. I need you to go get it. Right. And so and he, he looks at me, and so he comes back. So I put it with the shirt, and I said, see, do you see that pinstripe that's in that suit, which you, couldn't, which you did not see? Uh -huh. I said, the tie and the shirt pulled the pinstripe out. I told you this was going to go together. <laughs> and so then I'm sitting there, of course, with the socks, and then, right, of course, right. shoes. And it, but it was hilarious to me because I was, I'm buying it for my dad. He's there. Oh, you're buying for your dad, not right. yourself. Okay. Buying for my dad. Yeah. He's there. Yeah. And so I'm putting this whole thing together <laughs> and I start laughing because this is this is simply in reverse what happened when I was growing up. Oh, right. Where he would shop we had you. to stand there. Right. And we didn't have input. <laughs> he was kind of like, I'm paying for this. So he would be, okay, so, here's a suit. Oh, so so he here's a belt. He went, so we like, how about this, Dad? No. And so, and so, and so but was Rolo, it. you sound like you could do some styling. So well, I just, I, well, I mean, I, I'll be, I'll, here, here's what I hear that, that there are some things that, that do great on me. Yes. Uh, and one, uh, what drives me crazy, especially young African Americans, mm -hmm. I don't want a young African American going into a men's store and buying a one time only suit. Mm -hmm. What I mean is, you could only wear that suit really one time. Right. And just so, so what I was kind, in. What suit? Give me an example. Well, well, of that. well so, so, okay, okay. okay. So, young man comes into a men's mm -hmm. store. And he is trying to convince his mom to get that cream suit with, okay. with a red pinstripe. That you can wear, got it. Okay. And I'm like, true, <laughs> dude. That, I mean, I'm saying you, you're gonna wear it more than one time, but uh -huh. what? So I was in another men's store in Chicago. Right. It was two young brothers, and, and I'm trying to mind my own business, but I'm, but they're calling home it's to see if they can buy something. <laughs> and and the dude behind the counter, he's going along with it. I say, yo. Man, why, why are you gonna let them buy that rust, uh, that rust suit? <laughs> yes. I said, my deal is if you're under eighteen, if you're once. under eighteen and you have limited money, this is just my belief, mm -hmm. you should only buy a gray suit 
a blue suit mm -hmm. or a black suit. Right. Which allows you to get multiple shirts, right. multiple ties. Yes. And so, and I was ticked at the dude who worked there because I felt that's you. where he should say something. Right. To say, young man, let me help you out. Right. I but, know, I know great. you like. That's great. But I will say, arguably. They didn't have the money. They what? They didn't have the money. Okay. And but that, arguably, and, they could. And I, I agree with you, right? That is the suit you just described, the three, um, are probably the most versatile. But arguably, with the right point of view and style, you could take that rust suit or that cream suit with the red pinstripes and make it work. But they ain't got enough the shoes. Only thing of, <laughs> see? Not enough shoes. When you that can, is the thing. The only thing see, about it is if you only got, it going and coming. If you only got enough money for a pair of black shoes, <laughs> that ain't going to go with that cream it's suit not. with the red pinstripe. <laughs> and, then, I'm and that's why, I, and so, I, I, and, and I've so seen- did you say something? I yes, I did. To. Oh, hell, yes, you I did. did. Yes, I did. Now, the one time, uh, no, I said- Did they appreciate it? Or they yeah, like, oh no, several yeah. times, I mean, I, I was in another store and okay. uh, the, woman, the woman, she was a sales associate and this guy, and the outfit was horrible. And she was rolling with it. And I'm sitting looking at some ties, I'm going, Oh my God, I know he is not going to get that tie to go with that <laughs> shirt and that jacket and those mm -hmm. pants. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to mind my business. Cause I said, bro, I can't, no, I said, I can't let you walk out of that store with that. <laughs> I said, ma'am, I need you to step back for a second. Bro, this does not go together. She was not going to tell you anything. Yeah. But I can't let you walk out the store. Okay. I said, because a woman going to see you and start laughing at yeah. you. And he and listened? Yes. Yeah, so I was oh, literally, okay. and he was, because, you know, he was like, really? I said, yes. I said, let me show you this shirt, mm -hmm. this pattern. You see this? I said, you see all this is clashing? And so then when I showed him the option, he was like, whoa. whoa. Now, a, 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 now one time a, a woman got mad. She was mm -hmm. there, she was with her husband. She was a, oh, she was, yeah. And you started talking and about I'm, No, no, no. I'm minding my business buying a shirt. And the brother said, he said, man, he said, man, let me ask you a question. He said, what you think about this here? I said, I wouldn't get this shirt. And he was like, what? It was, mm -hmm. it was like a brown suit. It was for, it was for Easter. Right. I said, you really should get a blue shirt. I said, sky blue shirt. He's like, what? I said, give me that shirt. Let me show you. Okay. So I put it together and he said, man. I mean, that's great. She was like, mad. Why? Because she didn't put it together. Oh. She well, was. Traditionally, women do most of the shopping for Well, men. I ain't got it. Uh, See, my I daddy. That's changing a bit, but it's still very powerful. Probably like at this point. No, she was really. So she was upset. She was upset. Yeah. And a brother, and I, and I was, and then, then I also told him, I said, bro, do me a favor. I said, you under 65, you cannot wear the pocket square. That's the same pattern as your tie. That's that's a personal <laughs> thing. My my philosophy, if you're 65 or older, you can wear that it pocket square and match the tie. I said, go with a solid color. Was, oh, it was it was so funny. We we have another, <laughs> and I just want to say, though we can't see it on camera, what Rowan's wearing today with his blue, which you can see on camera. I love that pleated. I don't know if the camera picks oh, that this, up. This, so this is a, sh like a shabori pocket square. pocket square. So I, I, I saw. And then the blue. Oh yeah, Cowboy I got I got I got to wear the uh, the blue eel. Blue got to wear the blue eel. eel. Got to wear the blue eel. So you know, no, 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 don't put them on my book. No, I don't put it on the book. I put, put it right on here. The coffee table. Up on the coffee yeah. table. Pretty fabulous. I didn't put it on the book. Oh great, leave it up. Leave it up there. <laughs> we need to put it next to. Leave it up there because those are how it's like. Okay, so here we go. There's a picture. Yeah. There you go. Fabulous. I will wear <laughs> cowboy boots with suits. <laughs> And I like that. That's personal. That's like part of that, like personal. Style, then I'm from Texas right? too. Yeah, so, from you Texas. Know, so then again, I don't care. Culturally, and, and you're right, there, right. So, yeah. so, so, so I got to ask you this here. Yes. Um, lots of kids in here, mm -hmm. and so I love the black and white. Uh, it probably was either from. Probably was from Chicago. Right. Uh, all the bras oh, with the yeah. hat, they I'm were clean. Glad you love that. Well, it's a flashback because me, from the 50s, me and my brother, was, from we 50s. wore, yeah. uh, my, my, my parents dressed us. Yeah. And I have photos of us suited and booted. Formal. And, suited and booted. And those brothers were clean. <laughs> they were. They're clean. I love that photo. I'm glad you mentioned that. From the 40s or 50s. And then the way we put it together with the art director is when you turn the page, you that so first you see like four or five little boys, mm -hmm. right? And then you and as you said, they're like definitely clean, laid, slayed, everything. And then you turn the page and you see these three grown men. Also, you see the love and camaraderie between them. And they're dressed and they're sharp. I think you'd approve, right? Mm -hmm. And it's our future, Jay-Z and 
DJ Khaled. Now I got to ask you this. So I love that just position. What is it you don't like when you see, when you go out, you see folks got on stuff? And I see. So when you see, you go, <laughs> <sighs> like, I, look, I, I'm, I'm I don't fine. have you, strong reactions Yes, you like do. That, yes, you do. I, you know you. Like you mentioned <laughs> earlier, the pants hanging off. I, I'm fine with the pants kind of hanging off. All right, I'm one. not you trying to me. see your you ass. Okay, I, I, I'm, I'm like, especially the other day, this brother, he was he was holding up. It was okay. damn it down to his thighs. And right. I'm like, you, you know, you just pull the pants up, tighten the belt. You, ain't you got, said that to him? You, you ain't going to carry it. I'm just saying. <laughs> he's in the store. He's shop, He's literally shopping. And he's got one. And he one he's hand. holding up. And he's trying to put it in the back. You, you know you can use two hands. <laughs> what are you saying? You can use nothing. But I'm like, you, know, you, can, you can use two hands. Okay, then. you got me there. So here's what I don't like. I don't have a big problem right. with the pants falling off the butt. I know. I go with the flow of, okay, fashion, fashion. But you cannot be wearing that style when you are over 30. <laughs> this Yes, I've this seen. This is where it's getting real. Yeah, you know, you had, you can see the guys who like. Well, I was sixteen when hip hop hit with full force, and it's like you are now damn well forty six, <laughs> and you're still showing me your underwear while right. you're shopping in the CVS with you know your jeans or your pants, your right. tracksuit, your um, dirty gray sweats, whatever it is, falling down, you know, from your underpants. And your butt, I don't care if, I don't care if it's your butt yeah. your crack or your underpants, they're both equally offensive Over 30. when you're like 46. It's like, stop. Use That's the belt. just not a look. Use a belt. Use the belt. Use the belt. Not cute, not a look. You're not 16, whatever. Unhemmed and pants. And those, those kids aren't even wearing it that much right. anymore. Unhemmed pants. Unhemmed pants? Now, when are you a, talking about like an unhemmed pair of suits? I'm talking about one like a, is a bunch at the bottom. Okay, that they didn't cut it Woo! and fit it. That, that really bothers you? No, because it's because okay. you're going. You do know it's it's like a it's, it's, it's gathered. It, it's it's like your your legs are stacked. I I feel more empathy with that. I feel like that is a role. No, okay. Now I'm not blowing smoke here I got it. in any direction with what I'm about to say. I'm just saying. You really have a future in, <laughs> no, I'm serious, I'm so serious as a judge. You know, a book, and then the whole the whole nine yards, the book, the website, the, <laughs> and if you want to buy it, you can like license it with someone or whatever. If you want to purchase, you can purchase too. Because you really, like you talk about the puddle, some guys just don't know. I feel right. more empathy than anything else. So, especially young also, guys. And also you think, right, young guys, and then also, yes, especially young guys, because also, they didn't grow up in the community where there was a tailor down the block or in the house next door, right. et cetera. So there's also this disconnect between, well, even if I do know, how much is it going to cost me to go get these pants cut in hemp? Not a lot, but right. we don't necessarily know that or know. If they're still growing, supported. I understand. Once you 20, let me holler at you. Eight and eight. Mm -hmm. Six and six. Get them pants hemp. Cuff, no cuff, take your pick. And, and, and look, and for me, look, my dad was blue collar, worked at Amtrak, mm -hmm. but he dressed. Yeah. And we dressed. And so in terms of, you yeah, know, it, it doesn't Jack, really matter in and, the, I think of the black community, it doesn't really matter what your station is in life no. in terms of education. He got or dressed your, your to go grocery your shopping. Yeah, I think, you know, we respect dressing up and looking good. Right, looking good. Mm -hmm. um, last thing. Um, the photographer. Tell me about her. Who shot your cover? Oh, Itasia Jordan. She is originally from Massachusetts, has lived in Brooklyn for many years, has an incredible eye, and is such a talent. And she's just incredible. I mean, I don't understand why some of our, our media haven't, like, scooped her up and made her into a superstar. But she's going to be. She is like a great talent. And that's something that underlines that we need to do more of is nurturing our talent, not only in front of the scenes, like the models and so on, and, but also behind the scenes, photographers, mm -hmm. stylists, the people who make fashion run. Cool. Where can yeah. folks see you, hear you, find you? 
Oh, where can they yes. can find me online at official C White and my website constant crwhite.com. All right. Always Look good to see you. to chatting. You too. I, I appreciate Mr. it. Style. Keep slaying. Thank you. We're going to keep slaying. <laughs> Roland and I are going to keep it slaying. Join us. Make sure you're doing it too. There you go. <laughs> you want to support Roland Martin Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roland Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roland Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Our goal is to get 20000 of our fans contributing 50 bucks each for the whole year you can make this possible rollingmartinunfiltered.com